Hello and welcome to this Renderosity tutorial series on Poser 2014. This is the first lesson in the series and I am Mark Bremer and will be going with you through this as we explore the nooks and crannies of this powerful program Poser 2014. Who's this series for? Well, it's for a couple groups of folks. One is a group of people that have been using Poser for a while and figure they want to explore some of the other options that they just haven't used or don't know that they're there. Some places and things that are hidden within the program. It's also for the beginner who's launched the program and probably had a chance to explore it and been equally entertained and frustrated all at the same time. So in this first movie we'll take a look at why the interface is designed the way it is, how to customize it, and where to reset it if you happen to, um, well, break it. Change it in a way that you don't like and want to get it back to the way you do like. Now this is the factory launch state. If your interface doesn't look like this, it's because you've changed it and there is a way to get it back to be just like this. So we'll take a look at that. And as I get ready to move into doing that, let me go ahead and emphasize the fact that um, I'm doing this series on a Mac and I'll give you the PC shortcuts as we do that. I work on both systems. They're both equally um, special. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the program and concentrate instead on Poser. So we'll come up here in the Mac system for preferences. It's under the file menu on the PC. The second tab we have to choose from is Interface, and there's two options, Launch to Factory State and Launch to Previous State. As a rule, you'll probably want to leave it at Launch to Previous State because as you leave the program, you'll come back in and start working with the same tools again, but this is how you reset it. Why does that even matter? Why would you care? Well, there's a couple reasons. Let's talk about customization of the interface and then come back to that question about why would you want to reset it. The Interface is broken up into these tabbed areas called rooms. It's an idea that uh, came with Poser almost 10 years ago when it first came out and has stuck with the program because it is a content manipulation program, not a content creation program. So every tab that we have here has to do with modifying existing content in your scene lighting it, changing the way it looks, making sure it sticks to where it's supposed to stick, that kind of thing. But there's no tool sets like there is in 3D programs for creating things. So in the pose area where you would create an entire scene, you've got all these different controls that look like they appear in different uh, tabs, but they have different effects to a degree. We've got the material room, how you change something to look shiny or dry or wet. The face room, a lot of fun, we'll get to that in another movie. The hair room, where you work with hair as you'd expect and so forth as you get through it and finally you get to the content area where you can go purchase materials from the Smith Micro ecosystem if you'd like. Beyond that, in the Poser interface here, let me talk about how it's broken up real quickly and we'll start customizing the interface. Since this is a content manipulation program, we can move things around with our character or objects in our scene. So we've got these editing tools, and you'll notice there's a dynamic feature to it that as I roll over these different items, right here at the very top of the area, the information about it is dynamically served. So as I get to the taper tool or the scale tool, it lets me know what it is just as a confirmation. Likewise, when I come down to camera controls. Now you may notice that part of the type here is clipped across the top. This is because, for the sake of this series, I'm working in a very small area, and if you're using this program on a laptop, you may have some of the same issues. Poser loves a large monitor because there are so many controls to control everything in the scene. And so some of them have a minimum dimension, and as I launch to the factory state, it's loading in all the factory preset windows here, and we're getting some clipping, like down here for the UI dots. So we do have camera controls. We can maneuver around our scene, lighting controls. The names tell you what they are in different presentation modes, but let's talk about now how we can go ahead and give ourselves a little more room and how this interface actually becomes customizable. In the upper right-hand corner of each group of tools is an almost invisible little box that you can click on, and when you do so, you get some options. Docked, floating, drag docking enabled, and close. Let me explain what these are. Docked is where we are right now. We've got all these pallets, they're nestled into each other and they just fit in like puzzle pieces. Floating that we'll do is where I can go ahead and separate that. I'll do it in a second. But drag docking enabled is what you need to have checked if you want to customize your interface. And well, close is pretty self-obvious. Let's go ahead and make this a floating pallet right here. I do that, it pops off to the side. 
now I suddenly have a little more real estate here to work with and I have this palette I can float around and move with. Now you'll notice I'm clicking and holding and as I move to different portions of my interface this blue box kind of overshadows everything. This is a visual cue that as you drag your palette around and release it in this location this is where it will suddenly take up residence. So if I come down here and want to dock it back where I did have it I can click and hold and we see that we've got a blue box where it used to be. If I want it to sit up above all these things I can move to the very top I can also put it above my library palette if I release that. There it is. Let me go ahead and undock that and float it again. And put it right back where it was. No, not there. You just have to hover and wait a little bit. There we go. And release it and there it goes back in. Now if you happen to choose the close option right here and it goes away, where do you get it back? You come up to the windows area come down to, in this case, parameter dial, since that was the window that we had open. Click on it and it pops right back into where it should. Now, why would you want to reset the interface? We'll come back to the original question. There's a little item right here called renders. And you may like this, you may not like it. There are plenty of options and I don't have a favorite work interface. I use interfaces that serve the job since I work in this professionally and help me get things done faster. Now, in the windows area we just found the parameter dials. The problem with uh, this one little window here is that there is no equivalent over here that you can go ahead and click on and make it pop back up. If you like it you have to relaunch the program in the factory state to see it. Do I have to do that every time? No, because there is a feature down here called user interface dots. If you like this layout you can come down to the interface dots and click on it and this interface will be remembered by the system in your preferences for how you like it set up. Likewise, if I go ahead and say, all right, let's go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and change where this dock is located. I'll say floating. Let's go ahead and bring it above my parameter dial here. or release it. There it is. I like this. I can go ahead and click the user interface dots again and when I come back and forth now between these to one that's already been designated when I click on that well my screen goes back to the full size of my monitor but I brought back those windows that I had hidden there for a little bit too or clicked and made them go away so there is a way to go ahead and customize your interface that way as you move things around likewise you can go ahead and grab these little bumpy areas right next to the windows and scale certain things if you need to see more of them I'll do this quite frequently when I'm working with some of the properties or when I'm working with a library palette and want to see a lot more things you just click and drag and make them larger. So that's a really nice customizable feature for it. So let's look at some of these other things for the interface. The folks at Smith Micro and the heritage of Poser has been done really well. The types of controls you need for working on a specific thing are all co-located but they aren't necessarily very well defined. Now down here as I move through these there is a dynamic area up here at the very top of this window right here so we can see depth queuing, we can go ahead and see display shadows, those types of things. So know that this area does have that dynamic feature as well but let's introduce how some of these windows work together back and forth dynamically. If I come over to the ports here and choose four ports we get three more cameras added to the scene. Now honestly the cameras are already here, they're over here and we can click and change any port to a different camera but this is an automatic function. The dynamic feature I wanted to show you is that as I move the mouse over these different ports take a look at the lighting controls. What happens is that for each port that interface changes to give you an idea of where the lights are in the scene shining on the sphere. The sphere being just a target something you could see and look at. So know that uh, certain other items of the program update dynamically too, which is very nice for getting a good idea of what's going on, especially in a very complex scene. So in my main camera area, if I happen to come over here to my controls to go ahead and rotate this camera around the scene, we'll see the light controls interacting differently and updating accordingly to what's going on in my scene. So again, just to recap, the document area will change as you go from tab to tab. There will be some common tools that go from tab area or room to room, but they're used a little bit differently. 
We'll explain why that pops up in the next uh, movie coming up here soon. So this is your introduction into working with the interface, how to customize it. I had it built into four. If I go ahead and come back to the full port scene, we'll come back to our main camera scene and we're good to go. 